Let's do it. Welcome to Shack Town. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot of dudes. I love that we got called back tonight. I'm fully prepared, ready to eat, ready to drink. How's it going? Ready to shut it down. So, for recon tonight, I got two friends of mine. This is Dan from Barstool Sports, which is one of the most popular sports websites in America. I've had Dan do recon for me before. I like that. I mean, I've never had lighter fluid, but like, it's, <laughs> it's a hot drink. If Dan likes a bar, he can make it successful. If he doesn't, he can make it fail with the push of a button. Next to him is Chris Long, who's a current player with the Rams. As a Ram, Chris Long knows this town. He knows the sports market. And I've asked the two of them to come into your bar and give me feedback. John spies enter O'Kelly's Irish Pub, a 3,500-square-foot bar grossing $3 per square foot in sales, $147 less than the required break-even point of $150 per square foot. In addition to the cameras following the staff, John has placed surveillance cameras around the bar to capture the action and watch it live. What's up, man? What's going on? So how much. are you? Yeah, can I get a Bud? And how about you, hon? I have a Bud Light. Whoa! What kind of pouring is he doing? She's hot. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, what do you think? Here's a little, uh, flat, maybe? How can you succeed pouring a bad beer in St. Louis? This is the home of Budweiser. That's an embarrassment. So I got a burger, no cheese, Mimo, fries. Absolutely, thank I'll you. I'll do uh, Reuben nachos. And that's our cook, Anthony. Freeze and burn, freeze and burn. Now he's microwaving the burger meat to thaw it out. He should already have the meat prepped and thawed before service begins. This is just lazy cooking. Whoever wants to put these goggles on can have a shot for free. Camera, no, come on. <laughs> Kim tries, but she doesn't have a clue. He does not behave like this when I'm there. But this is the real him. Is our food coming? Is that burger done yet? So they don't have their food yet. Oh, Which no. has been, what, a good 15 minutes or so? Yes. That's totally wrong. Yeah. The cheese is wrong. You know what, F it. Just put the french fries, I'm done. What is that? That's the Reuben nachos. Oh, no. Uh, you're a restaurant person. You know how important food quality and consistency is. That is a huge issue with me. I'm the nachos. Please be good. These chips are awful. There's so much sauerkraut in Thousand Island, and none of the cheese is cooked. How's the burger? I'm not a stickler about hamburgers, but ham. For us, it was disappointing because they were the basics. You know, how do you mess nachos up? How do you mess a burger up? It wasn't good. So let me tell you why I'm at this bar. Billy wrote me a letter, and I want to read it to you. Dear Mr. Taffer, I've been to two of your seminars in Chicago a few years ago. You said if I ever needed anything, you'd remember me and help. I'm willing to step back in and do whatever it takes not to lose my business. Please, Mr. Taffer, help me. I will do anything. Hmm. Kev, what's Billy doing right now? Playing pool and taking shots. He's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. There's Waterman. Where the who's at? Waterman is a friend who worked there for years who chose to step up and be a manager. He doesn't want to. But if he doesn't, this place is going to go down. Let's get up. Let's get high. Let's get drunk. There's Razzo. She's a bartender. Hey, look at her. No. She's pulling a <laughs> beer with definitely... a cigarette in her hand. Oh. Look at that right there. Oh, no. oh over the drink. Grabbing it, yeah. grabbing it on the mouth is always a great, great option, too. And there you go, Kev. You just. Licked her cigarette filter when you take a drink of that glass. No drinks here. <laughs> There's Crystal. She's a bartender and assistant manager. There's Carolyn. She's a server. I don't know what's going on with her. And there's Rob, Kev. He's the kitchen manager. Give me a little while. They just put in a big order. So for recon, I got two Kansas City Chiefs offensive linemen, Mitch and Andrew. They know bars, they know this town. I thought they'd be perfect to give us a scoop on recon. So this is a big moment for Billy and the staff. Let's see if they deliver. What are we having tonight? I'd usually do something like mix, maybe a little sweet or fruity. You can do like a Long Beach, which is basically Long Island, but with cranberry juice. I'll give that a shot. 
Did she give them a menu? I don't know what to order. I need to look at the menu. So she's made no effort to sell them anything. Ooh, we're getting live over there. So the shot comes first. Let's see. Now she's going to clean up the shots. That was a honey she now has everybody's saliva on her hands, right, from touching the rim of all those glasses. Wipes her mouth with her hands, puts her hands through her hair. She's doing it all wrong. She hasn't done one thing right. Long Beach. Oh, we got a color of that. I'm actually confused at what she just put in there. Even if it's sweet and sour and cranberry, that color is not normal. That's good. It's not doing much. It's just like kind of watered down. Oh, man. So what's the deal with, uh, with ordering this food again? OK, so you're going to go to the food window. You're going to order from the food window. Now, the fact that she couldn't write it down and bring it over there with the nine customers they have in a room is absurd. So I don't get why you can't just like order there, but whatever. You guys got any question about the menu? Now, would you ever order food from a guy with that towel on his nah, shoulder like that? Not at all. Yeah. I would ask him, did you clean your neck with that towel? I just want to know. Yeah, yeah, I get food. I'm going to order just the big burger. Can I just get a uh, grilled chicken? And that's going to be at least a 30-minute wait. You guys OK with that? 30-minute wait, at least. Razzo was supposed to have a shot with the girls over there. I know. I wonder how many shots she's had tonight. Wow. What kind of owner would just say whatever? Shrug it off. She can wow. get drunk, steal money, fall. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand it. And whose booze know? is she drinking? Billy's. Yeah. Exactly. Here we go. So he's thrown raw chicken on the grill, Kev. Has he washed his hands? Not at all. Look at one in the bag. Yeah. Now he's going in the bag for? Not oh, for chips. chips. Oh. So that whole bag would have to be thrown away. Look at that. So those aren't nachos. Those are more like deathos. Yeah, yeah. Right? You can eat some yeah. raw chicken on your nacho chips. Can yeah. you imagine? No, I'm, I don't want to. Look at that grill. Now, I thought that was a charbroiler. It's so black. That's a flat top. That thing ain't been clean since the early 70s. <laughs> now, whatever he's cooking has got to come out with some black on it, doesn't Yeah, it? no doubt. Wipes that rag again, touches it all with his bare hands. Oh, man. And now, with, with his spatula, he goes to scoop up that chicken. And what goes with the chicken on the bun? Some of that disgusting grill. Her eyes are definitely glazed over. You guys doing all right down here? You guys have uh, like tequila? Oh, yeah. You want some D? You want, I'll take it. the D. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> you can do mine like slightly less. Stop being a vagina. <laughs> She's getting drunker and drunker. I will f you up, bro. So he writes me this letter, tells me he's failing, he's losing everything. Razo's drinking, he doesn't even care about it. She's getting drunker by the minute, and he's taking shots and playing pool. You know what? I want to see if he's ready to do anything. I'm going to go in and talk to him. Go get him, John. Sir. Question is, how are you doing? Could be better. So I read your letter. You said you would do anything to save your business. Do you have any idea what's going on up there? No. So how are you going to save anything? I guess I might have to do something. What did you do tonight? Play pool. Did you even look at what's going on at your bar? So what the hell are you doing, Billy? I guess I'm doing it wrong. No, you're not doing it wrong. You're not doing so you're race car guy. When you lose and lose and lose and lose, what do you do? Do you do something different? Yeah, fix it. What did you do here? Nothing. I didn't do anything. But you're losing every day, right? Yes, sir. And now you call me to bail you out. Let's go over to your bar for a minute. So, girls, why don't you light up another cigarette back here? There we go. So is this legal to smoke behind a bar, Billy, is it? because things like this happen. And now you can't consume any of those beers, right? Right. You're pulling a beer with the cigarette over the beer. But you didn't see that, Billy, did you? What about you, Waterman? Did you do anything other than drink water tonight? No. Who does she work for? Us. How many more shots are you going to have? You have one more drink 
I will fire you. Do you understand that? I am a little intoxicated. I'm a little drunk. I have taken shots after shots. I'm gonna admit that. I feel stupid right now. I should have been sober on my A game, and I wasn't. I want you to go in, buddy. I want you to sit at a table, a big table. I want you to order one of every pizza. Okay. It's about 11 pizzas. We're going to slam the kitchen. This grill's probably going to overcook all these burgers. And then I'd love to send you in and do your magic on all of them. Oh, yeah. I'll put them all through the ringer, give them a fair test. I'd love to see it. Let's see what they got, Frankie, all right? Okay. Go and order one of everything, buddy. Let's put them under some pressure. See what they got. Frankie Borelli of Barstool Sports enters Gil and Rick's. A 2,000 square foot sports bar, including a 1,000 square foot pizza kitchen with only one working oven. I'm just a cheese freak, man. I mean, I'll go constipated for three weeks eating cheese. I don't care. There's cheese. There's some good cheese, man. There's good cheese. There goes Gil. Nobody's taking his order. Look how frustrated he's getting. He has a menu in his hand. Hello? Hey, the West Coast, I never been there but to you. Uh. Hey! Oh, yeah, hey! It's fine. He wants to order a pizza. All right, guys, we got pizza for you. All right, so I actually want to do one of every one. So we're going to go one of every pizza here. One of all pizzas for you? One of all the pizzas, yeah. One of every pizza? Yeah, that's how much I want this pizza. Gotcha, gotcha. And also, can you add a stromboli and a calzone? Because I'm a New York guy, I love it. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Yeah, we're at the back of Let's see how Taz handles his sanitation, how he handles his arm. So put him under pressure. Taz, you got a big order coming in. Oh, boy. One of every pizza, medium, and then a stromboli and a calzone. A what? One of every pizza, medium, and then a stromboli and a calzone. You're kidding me? No. You're, you're kidding me, right? No, I'm being serious, I'm pretty uh, sure. Oh, you mother If you have a popular pizza place, guess what? 10 pizzas, isn't that crazy? You're gonna have 10 different people in there ordering pizzas at once. So this is a guy who's pissed off that he actually has to work. Yeah. Who's waiting on the kid to order the big, all the pie order? Oh, I guess me. We need to prepay or something. Prepay? I mean, have, have him prepay, I got you. Yeah, once you say, here's your, here's your company, that's what I'm gonna Prepay? What's he gonna run out of here with the pizzas? Uh, so we got to check it here just because it's a large, large order for it. You want to make sure he ain't going nowhere or nothing. They're making it seem like he's robbing this place. How uncomfortable can you make somebody? That is a terrible business practice. He's got to read the menu. It's like he doesn't know his own menu. No. You know there's a cheese. Yeah. Uh, you know there's a pepperoni. Uh, yep. You know there's a sausage. It's going to be a, quite a few minutes. Last one, last one, last one for me, last one for me. As you can see, Rick, aggressively helping in the kitchen, making sure that these 11 pizzas are flawless for us, Dave. Rick is really committed to the success of his business. All right, that's the Supreme. It's a Supreme. Hey, guys, do you want a slice of pizza? I'm not going to be able to finish the whole thing. Thanks, dude. No problem. It's ridiculous. Four goddamn tickets back there, and he's dying. Wait, which one is this for the ass? Which, which one is this? <laughs> for pizza That's pizza. the veggie. That's the veggie. This is the ass veggie. Ass veggie. That's the ass veggie. Guy comes in, spends more money than anybody else in their bar. Is smiling and getting along with the customers, giving out pizza. This guy is the best thing he's got going for him, and he calls Frankie an ass for putting money in his pocket. Unreal. Which one's this one? That's the veggie. This is the garden veggie. 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 We're getting oven down. That's why we're a little slow. But we'll keep them coming. How are the ones you got so far? I got to be honest. The people behind me, you know, they like the crust, but I wasn't a big fan. I gave it to them. Thank you. Why don't you go and sit next to Frankie, try some of these, and I'll come in and meet you in a few minutes. I want to give you some time to check them out and come up with your own opinion. All right, perfect. When I sent Frankie in to order 11 pizzas, I knew there was no way they were going to achieve it. But when I really understand failure, I can find the path to success. But sometimes failure is so deep it's astonishing. It's horrible. Supreme's horrible. Super doughy. These are wildly doughy. There's more dough than anything else. Want to talk about grease? Look at this. 
Oh, boy. I mean, this beer stinks flat at this point. Someone over here said it was flat, too. I, I'm hearing the one guy with the beer we're talking a bunch of <laughs> So I'm going to stay over here, because if I go over there, I'm going to slap him right in the goddamn teeth. I don't care who the he is. That's... That's the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. I want to try this one with those guys and see what's going on here. For recon this week, I have Lisa Marie Joyce, and I have Anthony Ramos. Oh, great. I put him in disguise. Hi. Hi. Good, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, how are you? I'll take any draft. Pick one for me. Okay. Something light. Rum and Coke or something? Rum and Coke? Uh, Where are they going? Give them a single. Give them a Those are the tacos there? Are these yours? Are these yours? Are these yours? So he could have said yes and gotten them yep. right away. Eat them and shut the f up. Can we get one more bite? What? Shut up for at least five to ten minutes. That's all I ask. Five to ten minutes, shut the f up. Here's me, here's you. Whoever disagrees, you, here's me. Don't show fight. How does he make money here? He doesn't. Mine's a little warm. Is it? So Anthony said the beer is warm. Can you give me your credit card? No, they're on me. On me. Now, what does that mean? Is he going to pay for it? John's paying for him. Good game, brother. These people are probably his friends, and they'll come in here and they'll drink all his booze night after night after night. So they're taking advantage of him. He's really a chump letting them take advantage of him. Because if he wasn't giving it away, they wouldn't come here. That's right. You're right. What we got going there? They call them little mini beers. OK, so is that beer with heavy whipping cream? Oh, my gosh. This is a drink that probably cost, I'm guessing, $2.10 a drink. Wow. So you start giving these away, it's $20, $200, $2,000. Imagine this. Up? After a month, they've given away hundreds and hundreds of these. You had one before? Are they on the house or something? I will buy it myself. Sure. Just so that you can yeah, taste it. they're free. I'll take them. Oh my God, free? free? Yeah. Okay. Might as well. Wow. I believe in you. Go, go, go. Swish. I never knew cream floated on the street because I would never want to do it. Never. <clears throat> we'll do the BLT and then I want to do those tacos that I saw. I'll do the wrap, I think. Look at this place. Look how messy all this looks. I can already smell it, and I haven't even been inside yet. I can't imagine the contamination. Looks like a file cabinet. OK, look at this kitchen. So let's see the fryer. Look at the color of it. You see it's all wrong in color? It's the filth in the oil. All the filth. Look at the side. It's disgusting. Look at the smoke coming up. That's not the oil smoking. That's the dirt in the oil that causes that smoke. Because oil doesn't smoke, you know that. Uh -huh. Look at the color of it. You see it's all wrong in color? It's the filth in the oil. Looks like there's dead bugs in it. It does, but look at how it's sticky and gunky up there. You know that this hasn't been rotated. Oh, those should be white. Oh, no. Oh. So you know what makes that color? Bacteria. Yeah. So that are E. coli colonies and filth on there. OK, here we go, some food. They can't eat this food. They can't. Let's go in and Let's stop this together. Let's do it. Oh, yes! oh my god. Boosh, 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 boosh. I, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. Oh, Jenny McCarthy. I wouldn't eat anything if I were you guys. Sean Tavern's here. Can I have your attention for a minute, please? What do you think? Can you see all that? Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. I think it's deep fried taco. Every one of them. Oh. When did you buy this bar? Eight months ago. How much in debt are you from it? Half a million. Half a million frickin' dollars. Yep. How much you lose in a month? Six thousand. Six thousand oh, dollars. How long do you have money? A month and a half. You're done in a month and a half. Did you know that? You're done in a month and a half. Did you know that? No. This came out in your watch. I wasn't watching. Exactly. I watched on camera one of the most disgusting kitchens I've ever seen. Is that somewhere else? No, it's yours. Oh. Come with me. I want to show it to you. Anthony, come with me. Jenny, I want you to see oh, this. Oh, it's vile. You guys stay here. Come You're on back. You're going to be scared. What's this? Three fried beans. Uh, this is three weeks old. Oh, my god. Touch it. Slimy, isn't it? Yes, sir. Let's get rid of that. This is your freaking life. You're in debt a half a million dollars. Look at this. These are your French fries. They should be frozen, right? Are they? 
Nope. Oh my God. They're made to be cooked frozen! Like a specialty? Um, not really. Not really? He asked for a specialty. She said, no, it's a daiquiri bar. What about all of the daiquiris behind? Recommend one. Sell the daiquiris. Blue mother It's like a Long Island, but it's blue. Let me show you a blue mother You want to do a blue mother All right. Ask him about the daiquiris. What did you want to drink? The only daiquiris we have is blue raspberry, Orange or fruit punch. Cherry is melted too much, and the uh, apple and strawberry are out. But I thought this was supposed to be a daiquiri bar. I know. Our daiquiri machines are not very good. <laughs> wow. My favorite daiquiri is the orange and the green mixed together. I could possibly get some green out for you if you want to. Let's try it. Okay. Oh my god, are you kidding me? So if it's not coming out, is that spout dirty? Oh, that, I don't even want to see that. I'm glad that's your department. <laughs> there we go. There you go. go. See how the green is melted, though? That looks terrible. And here's the boss still in the back. I understand you're trying to count the money, but you're not making any money to count. So for recon tonight, I wanted to bring in some great musicians, so I brought in American authors. I got actually all four band members to come tonight. Zach, James, Dave, and Matt. We've been going to dive bars forever. We've been a band for 10 years. We literally go out to bars and we'll kind of like play our own pretend bar rescue in our heads. Yeah. So it was really cool to finally be part of it. John Spies enter the airliner, a 3,500-square-foot music venue with one stage inside and another on the back patio with a tented awning. A full kitchen with a ticket window offers up food to patrons and music goers. James, a half-drinking beer? Oh, OK. Hi. Welcome to the airliner. What can I wet your whistle with today? Do you have a drink I don't have a cocktail list. I have a few specials that I can tell you all about. So we have the Miss Mary Jane. It's a regular margarita with our well tequila. I don't know why she told him it was the well tequila. It doesn't make any sense. You can upsell it, but you wouldn't downsell it. No. Can I get it? <laughs> you bet. Yeah. I'm going to try that Miss Mary Jane. You got it. So one, two. Ooh, that was a lot. This is like pouring out a lot. <sighs> Just a couple of dashes of bitters goes a long way. Is this the main stage here? This one we do mostly DJs and like smaller bands. We have another stage outside on the patio. You're welcome to check out if you'd like. Oh, OK. They have a big back area. It's awesome. Not only is nobody out there, it doesn't seem like they're using that space at all. Wow. Pretty good pour, huh? Little short. We just pour more. Oh, yeah. Awesome. She took out a bar spoon and she does not know how to use it. I know, the way she's, she's stirring it, though. You can tell she's never done it before. No. <laughs> how is it? Do not order the old fashioned. What's that sound? Yeah. Fries in the fryer. Those are the fries in the fryer. Yeah. Well, I just see all that bubbling up, and I'm just thinking, somebody's going to eat that. You see smoke like that coming out of the oil. Now, that's because of all the debris in the oil, correct? Yes. It'll get to the point where it can just bubble right over. Look at it go! Oh, oh my god. Well, look at that. Oh, my gosh. That's the worst we've ever seen, Mike. Yeah. Luckily, he was standing right there. I mean, that's look a at serious this. fire hazard. How gross is this? He has no gloves on. He's been touching everything in that disgusting kitchen. Now you're touching someone's cold cuts? Yeah. And there's our owner, <laughs> who has no idea that any of this is happening. But well, he looks like a miserable owner. He does. What is this? Processed cheese. OK, so he's taking the cheese. He's added some water to it. Very special recipe going on here. Look at it. It's all lumpy. You're using crap, and then you're watering it down, and you're putting it on more crap, and more crap, and then you're sending it out. Nacho fries. The nacho fries, yeah? Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I want to see if they're actually going to eat this the way this looks. Yo. That's not real cheese. I mean, honestly, this looks like a joke. When it came out on that styrofoam plate with that gross, fake, nacho cheese. And that was greasier than my face back in middle school. <laughs> like, this thing, it was so wild. 
So there's our owner. Have you seen him do anything tonight other than sit there? So he sat at the end of the bar and just had a drink and didn't do yeah. All right, we're going in. Those have to taste awful. The cheese kind of tastes like water. And if I didn't ask them to come into this bar, they'd leave right now, wouldn't they? Absolutely. It's a little weird. There's like a bitter aftertaste. Oh, my god. I can't even look through this. I can't watch this anymore. Somebody's going to get sick. Stop them. I can taste the freezer. Yeah, really. It's a little funky, man. For nine years, local Akron boy Tim Ripper Owens led as frontman for legendary heavy metal band Judas Priest, who sold over 45 million records, solidifying their place in heavy metal history. I became the lead singer of Judas Priest in 1996, and toured the world until 2003. I got their old singer back, and, and I uh, moved on to other bands and other artists and have toured the world ever since then. In 2012, after many years on the road, Tim decided he needed a change of pace. I've always tried to play this part of keeping the rock image of the guy who does have a movie loosely based off of him in Rockstar, but wanted to stop touring as much. I wanted to come home to spend more time with my kids. So he banded together with Micah Poston, a local businessman with a vision of opening a bar. When the local rock star, and he's a real rock star, wants to go into business with me. I was very excited. Jumping at the opportunity, Micah made an initial investment of $170,000. I liquidized two different retirement accounts, two or three credit cards that were completely empty. The agreement when we first opened up, he was going to spend the money and put my name on the sign. The percentage of ownership is 60-40. In July 2013, Tim and Micah revealed Ripper's Rock House to the Akron public. The first two months we were open, the doors did pretty much come off the hinges. You know, we brought in 90,000 in the first month, 90,000 in the second month. We had people coming from all over the world. Ripper! I thought there was no way we could fail. Soon, Micah realized that running a bar took more than a rock star's name on the sign. Even though that we were making $90,000, we were spending $110,000 in expenses, payroll, food inventory was way out of control. The servers throw away more silverware than they can actually make. He's the guy with the business degree, but in the long run, Micah didn't know how to run it. I started promoting things by taking the pictures and letting people see the foods on social media. The food's the big thing here, isn't it? That's the thing. We gotta get people to get here. Desperate to turn a profit, Micah made a last-ditch effort to save the business. So I cut prices to get people in the door, hoping that they would come back in. The people come in for the really, really cheap food. They're not coming in for the food that's not on special. So all you're selling is your cheapest stuff. That's what Micah wants to eat. The $2 burger. Losing $4,000 a month, Tim and Micah were unable to agree on how to get the bar back on track. So I'm trying to market food at full price. Sometimes we butt heads on what's right or wrong. I actually took that responsibility to try and promote the food part. That's why I started doing it, because nobody knows. A chicken wing doesn't advertise themselves. Somebody has to do it. Six more sub sandwiches aren't going to pay the electric bill. Now, after exhausting all of the resources, Mike and Tim are six months away from pulling the plug on Ripper's Rock House. The big thing about me losing this bar would be my name. I got to live off of my name, tour off of my name. That's the way I make my living. If I would lose any credibility, we could lose endorsements, we'd lose gigs. I don't know how long it would take me to recover from having something fail. If this bar closes, I will be bankrupt and I'll lose everything. It's not easy to say or think about. So Tim and Micah have agreed to pull back the doors, bust open the books, and make a call for help to Bar Rescue. Let's go inside. I want to sit with Micah, and let's hear what he has to say. OK. OK, let's do this. <gasps> My number. Oh, you Let's talk for a little bit. All right. I'm at this right. The two of you guys started the bar together. Yep. Now you're in a hole 200-ish? Close. About 170. So if things don't turn around, what happens? I go bankrupt. What do you think happens to him? Financially, I don't I don't see him hurting too bad. You realize he makes money on his name. Correct. 
How do you feel about it? Well, I feel when I'm trying to give a suggestion on what I would like to have happen, it's never looked upon seriously. I have to do what I got to do to get the doors open for the day. So you have another company? Yes. I've taken loan from my landscape company. Do you think you're making money on 50 cent wings? I mean, you're allowing people to walk in and walk out for next to nothing. And right. you put your name on him. I want to show you guys how stupid you are. Where's one of those tour shirts? Come here. Look at that shirt. The word of disappears. World Tour Wings 2015. Where the Paul McCartney? The food is served in freaking baskets. It looks like you're selling drinks that look like dishwater, for Christ's sake. You got a stage that those people sitting in the booths behind the bar can't even see. I got you, who's a wimp, who's not even protecting your own name, and you can't operate. I mean, how moronic is that? <laughs> I'm so excited. I brought in Maria Menounos and Kevin Undergaro. Maria Menounos is a well-known film and television star who co-hosts the popular show Extra. Maria's fiancé, Kevin Undergaro, a new media producer, is also a restaurant industry veteran. Together, Kevin and Maria co-created the entertainment-oriented podcast network After Buzz TV. I want this to be the most successful recon mission ever. We can speak in Boston accent. You know, I really would like a wicked big plate of nachos and some buffalo fingers, please. Okay. <laughs> I have three years in the bar business and I have 10 years in the food service industry. We're big fans of Bar Rescue, big fans of John Taffer's, and when he asked us to come do this, we jumped at the chance. We were all in. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're all in. All in. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'm all in. All in. This guy says all in one more time. I'm going to put my fist all in his mouth. Ah. Can you tell we're fans of the show? Kevin and Maria enter Scoreboard, a 4,000 square foot space with a single bar featuring two service stations and a lone kitchen in the corner. Is someone sitting here? In addition to the cameras following the Scoreboard staff, surveillance cameras have been placed around the bar to capture Kevin and Maria's recon. They're waiting a while for any attention from the bartender. Okay, so now we're at one minute. They have no drink. They're getting the bar wiped down. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Look at them staring at him, and nothing is happening. He could have said hello and asked them what they're having. Yeah. Even if you have a busy bar, you should always acknowledge the guests. We're going to get you guys. A lot of strawberry margarita. Strawberry margarita. <laughs> Whiskey cola. He made the wrong drink. That's not what she asked for. This is supposed to be a strawberry margarita. My bad. One second. I've already made like five margaritas today, uh, so it's yeah. in my head. I've already made five margaritas. This is not an excuse as to why you don't give your guests what they asked for. He pours it in with the ice in the stem glass. And topped it with soda. What was that? And what comes on the sampler? Everything. <laughs> Robert. Oh, thank you. We'll order the sample. I'm gonna get the chili cheese fries too. Look at them puckering up. It tasted like dirty dish soap. How's yours? <coughs> so they're gonna microwave the chili. Did you see that? Yep. Well, thanks. A couple of drafts. Thank you. The cheese isn't melted. And the french fries are soggy. Thank you. We still have the sample coming out, right? What's the ticket time on this? It's been a while. Eight minutes. I think I forgot to put that in. Oh, no. We forgot, forgot to, to put, put their this. order in. They are responsible for leaving the bar to cook the food that who is taking care of the bar guests. Where's all my bartenders? This lovely gentleman needs right. some beers. We're now at 11 minutes on that platter. Now, normally a potato skin would be fried so it's crisped and then topped off. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this has been very soggy. soggy. Look at those wings. They're not crisp. You can see it. Mm -hmm. um, potatoes are raw. Yeah. Yeah. 
That is wrong. That's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, that's gross. Don't eat that, Kevin. Don't eat that. I can't let this go on. I'm going in. That's called save. That's a little strong. Okay, so you want... <laughs> it's like... We're already at what, six? So Maria, he's opened six bottles now. Ask him if there's another one that he thinks you should try. I want to try your favorite. This is the Grenache. He's now opened, this is his seventh bottle of wine? Yeah. And how many sales? Not one buy. OK. Well, you've given me, like, every bottle at this point. <laughs> Get another one, get another one, get another one. He just wants to be the good times guy. It was clear why this guy was failing. Yeah. If you can get him to open one more bottle, you'll be my hero forever. Can we try one more? I have. So two doors down from Shopton of the Pop is a little town. So now he's opening bottle eight. And that's 32 potential glasses. So let's say he's easily given away $250 at least. He's losing $4,000 a month with his eco. That'll never change. So what do we got here? Wings, we have the lemon pepper, the mild and the hot. Any decent bar should know how to cook chicken wings. Dry. Look at it. See the dark color of the meat? Uh -huh. See the dark bone? That tells you this is a frozen product. I'm not sure I want you to eat this. Take this out of here, would you? Let's go see what's going on in the kitchen. Okay. The dry chicken wings worry me, so before my recon spies eat anything, I want to go inside and see the kitchen. Does that feel cold to you? Not at all. So that none of this is stored at the right temperature. Sour cream, warm. How you guys doing? Hey, how's it going, man? Can I get a burger? OK. Yeah. Monica, what are you doing? You don't want them to be juicy? When you do this, all of the grease comes out of the burger. The burger is now dry. You never, ever squish a hamburger. Who taught you to cook? Richard. Where's Richard? Richard! So time. 12 and a half minutes on the food so far. You should be able to crank out a burger in 12 minutes. There's not even anyone in this place. Richard! I'm John Taffer. John, nice to meet you. My hi. friend Maria Menounos. Maria, hi, nice to meet you, Richard. You're the one who taught her to squish burgers? You can speed the process, but... For who? Your bar is empty. I'm not the one serving the food. They are. Are you going to get people to come here doing that? I don't see any signs of any food coming up soon. The staff ignored us a little bit, and it took forever to get food. It just really felt like we were on an island out there. What is this? Old cheese. Does it look fresh? It smells like the refrigerator. Somebody eats this, they don't come back, right? What else we got? Thank you. Old sausage. Are they going to come back for that? No. Oh. So they're not going to come back for that either. There's cool restaurants coming down here now, aren't there? Yes. And this is what you got. You're failing because you should be. This bar really sucks. The food is spoiled. Richard owns the place, doesn't know how to cook. Monica works for him, doesn't know how to cook. I got to check in on my recon spies before they eat this food. That is awful. I don't want to oh, it's awful. Sit down, let me see. Oh. Look at this, guys. Wow. This burger yeah. is raw. Oh. This is your burger. Oh, my god. This is what your future is banking on. Here we go, guys. We're opening up. Let's play some drink. All right, everybody, come on in. Yeah, let's do it. Welcome to Sacktown. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. A lot of dudes. I love that we got called back tonight. I'm fully prepared, ready to eat, ready to drink. How's it going? Ready to shut it down. Peach flowers. Bang them out, guys. Bang them out. One, two, three, four. One, two. That seems like a lot more than two. This is the way we do this. This is the way we clap for And you're smiling, you're moving. Look at this, Tommy, right? Yep. We got real potential here. Yep. Oh, we have a hot pepper and a pesto fried chicken. All right, that first crab should be going out in two minutes, all right? Come on. 
I want you to manage this one table. Okay. Take their order. Okay. Get their drinks. Get their food order in. If you can't manage one table, you can't manage a restaurant. Would you agree? I agree. Chris, this is my wife, Amber. Hi, Amber. Peach what can I get you? Peach sour. Okay. I literally want everything. Whole thing. The whole thing. You want thing. one of it? One of each. Yep. Okay. <laughs> How about you guys? Chris took our order. He's sweating. He's nervous. He's all over the place. You want, you want me making drinks? So you right. should have a drink in five minutes, right? Oh, yeah. You should have your food in 15 minutes, right? That'd be good. Okay. okay. I will start this timer. Like, this is not going to go well. I don't even know what I'm doing right here. The first thing, we're not building in these, right? We're building in pint glasses. OK. I really want this to go well. But so I'm doing stuff that I'm not used to doing. I feel the burden. I feel the pressure. Chris has owned this business for three years. How does he expect to make money in the bar business when he's almost incapable of pouring a glass of water? Get him, John. How many are you making? I am making six peach sours. Six at a time. All right, let's get this going. I need five orders of chicken right now. Two of them are going to be hot pepper. The other three are going to be pesto. It's uh, very busy. We're whipping the food out as fast as we can. Ah, lit. These are the uh, peach sours. OK. Cool. And I'll be right back with the rest of it. We got a drink. We got a drink. Now, is it good? No. Uh, let's see if it's nine minutes good. It's actually pretty good. OK, so there's only a few minutes late. I got candy in the drink. <laughs> So, Tiff, how are we doing on the line? We got a lot of tickets, and we're going to start running behind if we don't get them out. If we don't do it in the next 10 minutes, we're going to lose it. I'm going to go ahead and run these myself. All right, thank you so much. We're pulling Ricardo from the kitchen to help go run. Have another pesto hot chicken? Yeah. There you go, my friend. And then at that point, he gets behind in the kitchen. One more chicken, one more pesto, one more that, right? We got three more. Yes. So things are kind of getting off, but the cooks are doing amazing right now. I mean, you can tell that they have true experience. That food looked amazing. You should have saw it last night, because that looked like a dumpster fire. <laughs> Peace shower. Um, ginger shandy. Ginger shandy, ginger shandy. I don't know, guys. This is kind of getting a little hairy back here. Chris, can you help me get some of these waitress tickets down, please? I was hoping for Chris to jump back here and no and he's just, he's made a bigger mess for us. It's annoying, because this is where our liquor cost is going. Are these clean or dirty? I don't know. Chris is doing this mess. Chris, this was a table to take care of. Yeah. How long ago did we order our food? 22 minutes ago. Wait a It was easier being a cop. <laughs> That's a train wreck. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Right, Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Chris, can you grab some ice downstairs? Chris, when you get a second, follow me behind. So I thought to myself, for recon, who do I know that spends a lot of time on the road that no bars, no good food. So I got Ryan Reeves, Nate Smith, two of my favorite hockey players in the world. These guys tour major cities, mm -hmm. go to the best venues. They're always treated incredibly well. They're VIPs. And Ryan is even a part owner in 75 Brewing Company. So he really knows his stuff. Here's some of our cocktails we have here. Nice. All right. I'm going to get out of my comfort zone here. <laughs> me too. I, mean, I think I'm in it, too. I mean, I'll try this huckleberry limeade. Huckleberry limeade? Yeah. And I think is, it, I'm gonna... is it good? It's good. You wouldn't yeah. lie to me, would you? I wouldn't yeah. lie to you. Okay. All right. I think I'll, I'll take a kiss me then. And a kiss me. <laughs> That's definitely outside my comfort zone. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you when I get out of here, I guess. So there's Brandon. He appears to be in some kind of crisis management, doesn't he? <laughs> what could possibly be going on with six customers or so in this bar? Uh that would have him in the office at that time doing that. A real owner is gonna be out there talking to their guests, talking to their people. He can go talk to Ryan and Nate, make them feel welcome in, inside the bar. That's all they're really looking for. What's this, that's Pop me? Oh, sweet. Oh, that's sweet. It's like, like sugar cubes. Like a fun dip? Yeah. <laughs> What's in that? Whipped cream. Oh, okay. oh yeah. There's whipped cream in that? Yeah, there's oh, whipped cream. Oh, I can't wait to see uh -huh. this. 
Do we not have any whipped cream? No, we don't, we don't have any, no whipped cream. Why would they be out of whipped cream in a can? You put a can in the fridge, it stays there for months. Right. It's not like they have to buy it every week or rotate it. You'd think if they have a drink with whipped cream, that would be one product that they would have plenty of in the fridge. Exactly. Try that. If you don't right. like it, let me know. Imagine it with the whipped cream. Yeah. Ah, imagine it with it. Oh, boy. Um, not bad? Uh, is there a margarita on the, t on the possibility? You want a margarita? Yeah. yeah. Can I actually do a margarita, too? Yeah, two margaritas? Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Maybe that's where the time for two comes from. The first drink sucks, mm. so it's time for two. It's time for two. <laughs> Okay, what kind of mixer is that? So is that a plastic cup? They don't even have proper tools back there. That's an old style martini cup. It has a strainer built into the lid. Look at how little it's filled the glass. Oh, and then she's adding ice after. How's that working out, Phil? It's horrible. Now she's adding more mix because she has to fill it up. By not measuring properly, there's no way this is going to be a balanced cocktail. We do uh, order the wings, the tenders, and the wedges. What's the point of shaking it if you're going to pour more mix in when you're done? What's the point? Cheers, big fella. Cheers. It's pretty sweet. It's sweet. I don't like mine kind of spicy. And there is a very small, almost residential deep fryer. Right, something that you can have in your own kitchen at home. But a deep fryer like that, you put more than six or seven wings in that thing, the temperature drops right away. Right. You can't cook in a commercial environment with that thing, Phil. No way. You see any gloves anywhere? I see zero gloves. I was just about to say that. So is a bartender trained in kitchen sanitation? Come on. This is a completely different discipline. Bartenders make drinks. Sure. Kitchen personnel are trained to run a kitchen. Do you think that she has any idea how to work in a kitchen? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And where the hell is Brandon in all of this? It looks like he's still screwing around in his office. I mean, that's just absolutely insane. Yeah. Hey, no, 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 no. I'm going to dive into this little guy right here. Look at his face. <laughs> super, super, super. Phil, the food is absolutely terrible. There's not enough customers in here. Right. We're not going to learn much about the bartenders watching this. What about if you go in? I want to see if the bartenders react to you well, right? Can yeah. you make it for you? We'll at least know where they stand, and then we can deal with it then. Let me go see what these guys are working with in there, John. Great. All Let's right. give it to them, buddy. All right. How you doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, right? What's up? I'm Phil. I'm good. How, How are you doing? You? What's your name? Anthony. Anthony. Yes. <laughs> What's your name? Amanda. Amanda. Nice to meet you. My two friends right here, they have margaritas. Yes. I want to see how you guys make those margaritas. Okay. okay. Because I do know that Trina made them wrong. Okay. So I want to see how you guys make them. We have margarita glasses. What's the size of those margarita glasses? Do we know? I don't, I don't know the size no? of those. No? Okay. We don't have free pour, so it's kind of, it's, I've never been trained on it. Let's make this margarita. Okay. Let's taste it. One, two, three, four. Now Holy making both of them at the same time. I'm making them. Let's pour that drink. What are we doing? Oh. Oh, this takes forever. What is this? Whoa. Okay. We always use the ice. Go ahead. That we have. Do, do your thing. So. So you made two drinks in one, right? You will. I tried to. I can't watch this anymore. Oh. Hi, this is John Taffer. Click here to subscribe to Paramount Network on YouTube for more Bar Rescue.